Hey, this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. How's it going? Well, it is December 30th, ready to begin a new year. And wow, what a year 2018 was. And the next year, what's going to be in store for next year? Is it going to be a new project? It's going to finish off the old ones? Is it going to start off a new venture? Well, I'm kind of hoping for everything, you know? That's what I'm hoping for. Anyhow, let's get to it here. I've come across a new different thing here. You can see that my DAW is a little bit different. I'm using a thing called Reaper, uh, made by a company called Cocos Reaper. Yeah, it sounds kind of funny when you say it really fast, but then again, it's not the way I named it. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> Cocos Reaper. <laughs> uh, that's if I say it right. I think that's how you say it. Um, <laughs> That's just it. Just funny. Sounds weird. All right. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. So we're getting uh, getting off subject here, but I want to talk about sampling. Uh, I did something the other day about how creating a seamless loop, and I kind of showed you the, some of the problems you'd run into when you create a seamless loop. It went a little bit longer than I normally should. You know, it's about a 30-minute video, but I wanted to know all the detail, and I wanted to show you all the key commands in creating this in Audacity. So check it out right here, and you'll see the video pop up up there. And it, it goes into a lot of detail on how to create this seamless loop. Now, the reason why that's important is when you get into the whole dark world of sampling, it, you, you need to have a really good sample to work with, especially if you're going to start looping things in a sampler. Now, that said, I have come up with a new sampler, and it's free, as in free beer. Yes. And let's go ahead and take a look at it here. It is called Grace. And it's by a company called One Clue. I believe that's the name of them. Let's go ahead and just open it up here. One Small Clue. It's the, give me correct here. And it's called Grace Sampler. Amazing sampler. And I just love it. It is a perfect workhorse for doing small type of patches and samples. It's not one of these things that's going to replace contact or do kind of like everything. And like before in Logic, I used to mess with a, a pretty big sampler called ESXi. Uh, nope, nope, that's wrong. ESXi is the VMware application. <laughs> EXS24. Yeah, being in IT, you kind of get your acronyms sort of mixed up, and I'm a little crazy too. So, anyhow, it's not going to be that replacement. However, it is perfect for, like, if you have maybe two or three samplers, even four. Now, check this out. I did this with four samples. All right, so I've put in four different loops, and I layered them. So, you check this out. The different layers and... Four samples and how this works check this out you just drop and drag to load it in there so it's right away the sounds that come with it are pretty decent really decent I just I love it and the cool thing about this is you can do so much with it you got your amp envelopes you got modulation envelopes got two, LF, two LFOs and it's really easy to set a modulation for example on this base right here so say like if I wanted to do an LFO I go just go over here and just select that LFO and then I could just find all right what am I going to modulate it let's go ahead and let's go ahead and modulate the filter frequency so let's go ahead and just click right here and just click right down here and see how it just automatically knows that I'm picking that as long as you have that clicked. Now check this out. And if you right click on it, you could pick, all right, this is my source and modulate via none. So you can even have, you know, a modulator on a modulator. And that's always kind of fun. But it's pretty simple to do something like that. 
the rate. So it looks like you can change it right here and it gives it one second. Okay, here it is. And if we do one eight, now let's go ahead and see what that does. Yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, fun stuff. So that's just one part of this sampler that I, I just think this is amazing because it's not just a sampler. It could be a wave table synthesizer. All right, so the other cool thing about this sampler is, is yeah, you got the, the different modulations and the different uh, amps and uh, envelopes. Um, and now just be careful, like, Sarah, like, you know how it's got on here. So it's so like if you wanted to move something else, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it shows you if it's parallel or serial. Yeah, this thing is a synthesizer and a sampler. It's not just a sampler. However, um, just make sure you click on the main once you get out of there. So that way you're, you know, if you're moving something else, you're not accidentally, you know, creating a modulation for something that you didn't really want to modulate. <laughs> um, however, maybe you might find something cool that way. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on. All right, so the other thing I want to show you about here is, all right, so right now it's, you just have one group and it has five samples in that group. So if we go into here, the sample map, you can see that how all these samples are, are broke out. So like at the higher up the key, you... <laughs> You know, different uh, samples that have been taken, and they're all identified in that one group. Now, when you go in to unclick the sample map, just to get out of it, just click it again. And if you go in here, you'll notice that this whole group is controlled by here. Now, if for some reason you wanted to say, like, all right, well, this higher one right here, I don't really want it to be controlled by the same group. Say like, I want to do it different, differently and put a different type of LFO on it. Well, you can do that, but what you'd have to do is you have to create a new key group. Just go in here and groups and say new key group. And, and what it has done is then you just click on that one side and just say, all right, move to key group number two. So what that has done is now given you the ability. So if we go back to out of there and just click on again, is now all those other keys or those other samples are controlled by this one key group, but that other one is controlled by a different one, which is group number two. See how if you click on this little area in here, you can see all the different ones that you're, and they'll all be controlled by group one, which is this main interface right here. That's how I've kind of found out. Now, if we go over here in group two, pick that one right here, this is cool. Now check this out. What if it's like, hey, well, I made all these cool sample settings, but I just want to change something differently. Well, you can do that. And you could do is you could do a copy. So copy key group settings and go in here and then go back to over here and just do paste key group settings. So now what it has done, it has basically changed, uh, copied everything I did there. Now I could go ahead and back to that LFO and say like, all right, I'm going to do it a different way. Go the reverse. Now let's play it. <laughs> Too much fun. All right, so you get the picture. You, there's so much possibility with that. Let's take you a little bit further here. Go in here. Now, this is the one I did the other day. If we go in the same, get out of there. So we could see that I have you know, five groups in each sample set, same key, but different settings. And what I did is, like the first one right now, I have it panned one way. The other one I have panned a different way. And then this one, these are actually two of the same samples right here, three and four. And I have them also panned, but a little bit more. And then I have this other one which is not panned. 
it's kind of in the middle a little bit more in the volume So that's kind of cool. It, it gives me the ability to just really widen out that pad some. So I, I'm liking it. I'm liking a lot. Is it a contact killer? No, heck no. But you know what? It'll give it its run for its money, that's for sure especially for free you know and if you just want to do a couple samples here and there and and resample stuff and it's a more and especially if you're like me into more of a synthesis type of sampling um, this is perfect for that when you load a sample it's just drop and drag really that's all you have to do you know you just pick it from the patches so say like I went in and I, I created a you just right click on here and just do add directory and just go over wherever you have your samples at from there you can drop and drag patches in there uh, or samples so that's it's kind of easy it's pretty intuitive and I was able to figure it out in probably like 15 minutes so I, I give credit to these guys they did a good job on this thing and it's a really fun instrument all right guys uh, remember my friends be groovy and uh, happy new year